Good afternoon to you. This is the Lunch and Learn with Prosper Taruvinga. I hope I find you well in this lovely Thursday afternoon. All right, so like I said, my name is Prosper Taruvinga and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital where we help coaches, consultants, and digital entrepreneurs like yourself to actually package brand and market your services so that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I hope um, you've been doing mighty fine. We are almost towards the end of the month of uh, June, where obviously um, that was half um, of, um, I mean, half of 2017, almost gone. Where has the year gone? All right. Now, Francesca says, got the not pet out. Truly, thank you so much for tuning in, man. Um, I hope this video is going to come out perfectly. This is a second attempt. The first one got eaten up by Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. So, obviously, um, as the topic suggests, guys, um, today we're talking about your unique added value what value are you bringing into the marketplace and what constitutes good value and is what we're doing actually profitable giving away free information every single day now del kalgi thank you so much for tuning in my friend I hope you're going to find this one a little bit valuable. Can you also type in the comments there where you are tuning in from? Because I want to see what sort of audience we are bringing in and what sort of people are coming into our lunch and learn. Mandisa, Gunjani, Mankazana, you caught me a little bit off guard there. So like I said, guys, I help digital entrepreneurs to start, scale and grow and also package and brand and market their services so that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, we are living in what is called the um, information era where a lot of us are being bombarded with a lot of content. We're being bombarded with a lot of information and don't quite know what to do with it. All right. So I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. I'm here to tell you what you can also do not to contribute to the noise, but to actually help help your customers understand who you are, help your customers understand how you can actually retain them and help them understand what you can help them with, okay? Um, I might not know a lot of things uh, about you, your business or whatever you're doing right now and for who, but I know one thing. I know you are a problem solver. Okay, as an entrepreneur, you are here to solve problems. You're here to help people go from where they are to where they want to be using whatever systems or strategies that you or your business is peddling or selling or providing. Okay, so here what I have is a bit of a write up from people that are much more clever than I am, but it doesn't mean that they know it all and be it all. Okay, I was reading a book by Brendan Bashard. Um, if you guys are familiar with him, he's got a lot of content on the internet there and he's got a statement where he outlines and says your life story and your experience have greater importance and a lot of market value than you could ever probably dream of. Okay, I'm going to say that again, that your experience and your life story, if you combine those two, are going to be helping somebody else, um, you know, go away from their pain and actually live a life that's profitable and enjoyable. And you can actually get paid for it. A lot of people don't quite understand and grasp that concept because we are all in this mentality that if I give away my stuff, then that might make me look cheap. That might make people take advantage of me, etc., etc. It's not going to work like that. You see, the thing is, you are here to actually make a difference into the whole world. You know what I mean? And the best way to do this is to package that information and experience that you have all right, to actually, or it, it can be on any topic, it can be on whatever you think you're doing right now to help others, whatever topic it is, whatever industry you're in, if you package that experience, if you package that knowledge, you can actually help others to succeed, okay, I'm a dad, uh, my little girl, she's, um, uh, she's two this year, cute as a button, all right, and, um, but, she keeps falling every single time we're running in the park 
or every time we are walking on, on the path or every time we're trying to exercise. And I figured out what the reason was. The reason was she could not tie her shoelaces. I could do that when we're going from, um, you know, when, when I'm dressing it up before we go out. But as soon as we walk, they slip or they untangle themselves. And then those shoelaces, she steps on them and she keeps tripping. She keeps hurting herself. She keeps having bruises. Now, that's painful for a two-year-old. And for somebody who doesn't know the scope of pain or that the world is supposed to be like that, that's like the end of the world for her. If you see her crying, going, oh my God, look at this. And you got to kiss it better. All right, but there's an antidote to that. It's only teaching her how to tie those shoelaces so that she doesn't trip, so that she doesn't hurt herself every single day. Now, one day we were walking and um, uh, we were throwing the tennis ball across and she ran in front of me and all of a sudden I couldn't see her because my line of vision was there. And I looked down and there she was in the ground in the dirt and she was, she was crying because she had, you know, tripped on her shoelaces, okay? I took it upon me and I was like, you know what, this is it. I set her down and I started teaching her how to tie her laces. You take your right hand, left hand across, and then you make a knot, etc., etc. Okay, what did I just do for her there? I've saved her a lifetime of bruises. I've saved her a lifetime of pain. I've saved her a lifetime of not knowing what to do when her shoelaces come off. Now, did I lose anything from that activity? No. But what did my little girl gain? A lifetime of experience. Okay? So you might know a lot of things that you don't think somebody needs to know. All right? And before you, 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 put, that in, you put that away, that very information or that very stuff that you think nobody cares about could save them a lifetime of pain and and bruises etc etc okay so like i'm saying guys you're here to make a difference in the world and the best way to actually do that is to package whatever knowledge that you have or your advice on any topic or any in any industry so that you can help others succeed there's a lot of people out there that don't know you know the treats that you know on the websites there's a lot of people that don't know how to, to maintain an email list. There's a lot of people that don't know how to even put out a, a content or sit in front of an audience and, and do a live feed like this. But who am I then to stop those people from actually knowing and learning all those things? Who am I? And Connor, thank you so much for tuning in. You finally found us today. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it wasn't difficult. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. If you are going to add value, if you're going to add value to your clients, you never know what sort of impact you will have to them for the rest of their life. And this is why now, whenever you help somebody achieve something, you become front of mind, you become the trusted person, and we all know that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So don't ever discredit your fact that... Um, that you actually know a whole lot more that could actually somebody would actually pay for. Even if they're not paying for it, but it would be something that somebody would value and treasure. And whenever they then think of doing business with your business or with your brand, you are the first person they go to. Humans are creatures of habit. No matter how new and shiny something comes in, no matter how new and shiny somebody comes and tells you that this is going to be the best web design ever, etc., etc. If you haven't heard about them, if you haven't talked or somebody hasn't mentioned them to you, they are nothing to you up until you've made a concrete decision that you want to do business with that person. All right, Byron, thank you so much for tuning in. And Bobby, Professor Bobby, I'm sorry I didn't say that right. Okay, so at the end of the day, you know, added value is an important tactic that you can actually use, especially if you're a small business or if you're still starting, for you to acquire and also to retain those customers. Because people are coming to the internet for information. And if your brand is the brand that's providing that information, you become the person that they know, like, and trust. It increases brand awareness and you actually differentiate yourself from those people that are just going, look at me, look at me, look at me, or sell, 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 sell. All right. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of clutter on the Internet. But some people find their way through to your content. You know why? Because you are not selling. You are just providing value and people don't actually like being sold to. 
When was the last time you bought stuff? You know, you literally go out, you're going every day when you're on the internet, you're either looking for information or you're either shopping. All right, we're there shopping. And the reason why internet sales are doing a whole lot better is because nobody's coming in and saying, hey, sir, what can I help you with today? You know, those people that talk to you when you get into a shop. All right, people don't like being sold to, but they like buying stuff. All right, every time you see somebody um, uh, excited about, every time you see some somebody excited about, um, uh, every time you see somebody excited about what, what they're doing or every time you see somebody excited about um, what they have bought, it's usually a purchase. All right. But they like buying stuff. OK, so you want to increase brand awareness by actually giving out information so that people get to know who you are, what it is that you're about, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so there's, there's, there's a few ways that you can use nowadays to actually create that value and get people to actually start considering you as the go-to person that would help them achieve whatever they, 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 they want to and also go away from whatever pain or for you to solve their problems since you are a, sol a problem solver. All right. Whenever you're selling things online, guys, don't you ever, ever forget. Uh, Lee says, good point. Don't force sell. Provide sales experience. Exactly. People do it for their experience, guys. You know what I mean? You see, whenever you are selling something, always look at it from the customer's perspective. Remember, the customer is always looking to say, what's in it for me? So you want to give it to them so that they're not scrounging or looking around to see if, you know, any, anything of what they're saying or anything of what you, you are trying to sell them is going to be, um, you know, perpetuated by you just trying to force something down their throat. You see, the, the, the proper, proper art of adding value actually starts with you seeing your business as a problem solver. Because people are trying to run away from a pain. What is it that you can, your business or your brand can help other people to, 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 to go away from? And Andrew Brown says, hey, Prosper, it's pretty late uh, my way. Is there, well, of course, there will be a replay. Andrew, there will be a replay. And thank you so much for tuning in this late anyway. There's always a replay on my wall. Okay, so important. You, you, you want to consider what actually is important to your target audience. All right, and deliver it to them and how your product or your service is actually going to benefit them. I see a lot of ads in my newsfeed and all they do is, um, oh, listen, this is what we've got. This is how it's going to work, etc, etc. Have you taken the time to actually see if this is something that the market actually needs? Okay, have you taken the time to see what what actual problem is is your good or your service or your product going to solve? How will it overcome the obstacles that your client is already facing? You know, a, a lot of businesses that I speak to, they miss the boards, you know, and they're focusing on the features instead of the actual benefits. What is the benefit that the customer would want to choose my content instead of going to sit down and watch Ty Lopez who's giving people away money? What is the benefit of you actually just sitting here and listening to this for the next 30 minutes and not going off and listen to Gary Vaynerchuk? What is the benefit? That's where you need to show your unique added value because your talents, my skills, my stories are totally different to the next guy. All right. The, the, the situation in my family, the situation in my business, the way I respond to my clients, my customer care, etc., etc. It's a unique thing to me. The fact that I show up every single day for 30 minutes is my sort of guarantee to my clients that I'm not just a one click wonder. I'm here for the long haul. You might watch this now. You might watch this in post production. But you know what? I know that I woke up. I delivered. All right. And it's now on. It's quite funny, actually, if you if you look at it this way and how this whole, um, you know, showing up on live has actually added a lot of value to my clients. Some of them, you can see the reviews that they're leaving on my page, Live Long Digital. And some of them is the, the letters that they write to me and the presents that I get in the mail and all the functions and the things that I get invited to. You know why? Because my clients' businesses are actually 
going so well, their dreams are envying their reality right now. Okay, some of the students that I coach, you can also look up my reviews and stuff like that. Most of their work and what they're doing, they're earning more than the gurus out there. You know why? Because they show up for their clients. They produce. Okay, and I'll also tell you something really, really funny about these live videos right now. You might just skip through it. You know why? Because you don't care. But always there's somebody who cares and somebody who's been watching and somebody who's actually following in as much as I'm proud to say every time I'm sitting here for 30 minutes, I'm getting paid almost $400. It's crazy, but it's actually true. Do you know what I mean? Because I've been giving away all this free value. Now people are actually consistent with knowing what time I show up, with knowing what I'm going to provide and taking notes. All right, I'll give you a specific example. I'm, I've got a, a finance guy who is a finance, uh, what do you call these people that help you get a mortgage? So he's a mortgage broker, let's just put it that way. And um, his business is basically working with small to medium business people that are on the rise. And they also want to invest in property or invest in other people's businesses, right? So he's been watching me for about six, seven months. Can you imagine? Six, seven months. That's what he told me. We had a quick call. I think that was in uh, April. And then three, three days ago, which makes it on Monday. We closed a $4,000 deal where he's paying me $4,000 every single month on a, on a retainer for me to do his SEO and overall strategy. Okay, so if we can just calculate from that one client, I'm not going to talk about all the other clients that I have. Um, I simply did the maths a little bit earlier. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to try and, 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 re and, and reproduce the mathematics. But maths is not my biggest point. I calculated that if I'm doing five videos a week, that means I'm doing 20 videos a month, okay? So in four months, I've done 80 plus videos, which which totals to plus or minus, uh, where's the math? Where's the math? Somebody work with me here. So which totals to plus or minus uh, 80, it should be 80 hours, no, 40 hours, 40 hours of work, okay? So in that 40 hours, if this person has just paid me 4,000, all right? If this person has just paid me 4000 a month consistently, what that means actually is I'm getting paid $100 per episode. All right? So where now is it now free information? You know, because it's all compounding. Okay? So at the end of the day, you, you, when you start being consistent about actually showing customers that you can help them by actually helping them, yeah, good things start happening because the more you close off yourself and say, oh, you got to pay me in order for me, for me to start telling you how to do X, Y, and Z. How are people going to know what you do in a sea of 500 other people doing exactly the same thing that you do? And they, they, they also have a unique selling posi position. Do you know what I mean? So although, you know, the debate whether the customer is always right or the customer, um, you know, should always have right away. At the end of the day, if you're not showing your customers what you're capable of way before they put out their credit card, way before they trust you, you've already lost that transaction. Now, like I said, seven, six, seven months, this guy has been following me. Have I not shown up? Have I not sh showed up? I have every single day I'm here for 30 minutes. Sometimes nobody's watching, but you know what? At the end of the day, I get 800, 900 views in post-production. You know why? Because Australia has this big time difference on the world. And there's people in the States that actually, you know, wake up to watch my video. There's people in London that type in and say, Prosper, I almost missed it, but I caught the end of it. I watched the replay. Just to amuse yourself right now, can you just type in where you are right now? Can you just type in where you are right now? All right, so you, you definitely, once you start this, people will start coming to you with their problems. And once you are seen as a problem solver, because people would all, all automatically anticipate that you already know how to solve their problems if you can solve a problem from somebody else. You know, and Byron is in Perth. Cheers, man. 
Um, over the weekend, you should actually go to Rottnest Island. That's my favorite part in the world right now, unless somebody comes up with something different. Okay, so if you really, really, really want to make sure that you're, you're putting yourself, you know, forward in the right foot forward, you got to be there for your customers, guys. Hey, Kona! <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll, um, yeah, we'll probably see you in the next week again. You know? You, you always have to be creating value for your customers because how are they going to know what you're capable of? That's the reason why whenever you go and buy a car, they give you a test drive and they let you stay with the car overnight so that you can actually feel how the car works. So you can actually be in it, smell it and, and, and do whatever you, you do with it so that it becomes part of you. How are people going to know what you can deliver? How are people going to know what you have sitting in your hard drive if you're not out there showing it to them? And I'm not saying you should do it via live. I'm also saying there's a lot of other ways that you could do it. You could do it through your branding. You could do it through blogs. You could do it through guest posting or even being on other people's blogs or on, on, on um, podcasts, etc., etc. You know, you never know where your customers are searching, but I'm not saying you should burn out just trying to reach out to your customers. So that's why I'm saying most of the times we are failing to actually business because nobody knows what we do. But we're so romantic about what we're doing because all we ever see is our work, all we ever see is our websites, all we ever see is the stuff that we're producing, but nobody else is seeing it. Okay, so you want to develop, you know, memories around your stuff. You want to develop stories around your, your stuff. When people are away from the computer and, and they're talking to their relatives at a barbecue or whatever, I, I, I usually call it deliver a barbecue experience. You deliver so much good content and customer service to your clients that you're all they ever talk about at a barbecue. You know, because once you have that status of people talking about you at a barbecue, then that means you've sort of made it. And you got to give people stories to talk about. All right. So you have to give them unforgettable experiences because like I told you, you might just say something that might shift the way somebody does their business and they will be forever indebted to your advice. And as human beings, there's always that fact of reciprocity can never say this word. Can somebody type it in the in the comments? Oh, well, how do you call it? Reci re <laughs> reciprocity. People feel obliged to give you something back if you've helped them. All right. So never underestimate the value of free resources, guys. So whenever you, you create a blog or you create a, a, um, a free guide or a printable PDF, I've got a lot of people's stuff in here that I printed out because they have it, um, you know, free on their website. But every time I'm looking for the, 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 the I have a problem that their website or their solution can can solve. I just look around and then I go straight to them. Do you know what I mean? So all these free resources that we put out, your live, your podcast, anything that brings people into you without you actually selling to them creates a bigger bond, a bigger trust, and a way that people would be more comfortable to ask you more questions. And the more questions they ask you, there you can pinpoint what their frustrations are, what they're trying to accomplish, and then pretty much you see how your program can fit into their schedule. Automatically, you're not selling, you're solving problems. Okay? So, you know what I mean? So, when you start creating value, added value, you also have something to wake up looking forward to do. That's the reason why a lot of us are not motivated because we are not helping other people to succeed. Even if it's not paying you today, like I told you, you know, I've been doing this for like four or five months and now I'm getting paid for it if I put it, if I start thinking about it strategically. So now my mission is to increase my, 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 my hourly rate, you know, of, of these um, live videos that I'm doing. All because I really want to be of value to the next person. 
Because every time I'm out here, I'm studying somebody else's cycle for the six months. Remember, people need to see you at least six to seven times in order for them to make a concrete decision. The day you don't show up, the day you don't give something of value, you start that cycle with them again. You know why? Because there's some guy who's already come in and taken your position. All right. So the more you put out shareable content, even somebody who's passive and, and who is not really in your radar, whenever somebody shares your stuff, they're opening you up to a new audience. But if you're just going to wait for people to come to you or if you're going to wait for people to just look at your ads, no one is sitting and waiting you know, for you to just show up on their, on their news feed. Yeah? So all these free resources will serve as tools to help, you know, a small business to actually build brand awareness and expose you to a target through, I mean, your various products and your services. But unless if you've got a scarcity mindset and saying, oh, no, I'm going to hold on to whatever you have. What good is a company that you own 100% shares and you're not getting any revenue or a company that you own 10% shares, but you have, you know, a lot of people raving about you. All right. So you really want to consider and start looking at your strategy. Are you giving out any content? Are you giving out any value into the marketplace because you are paid in direct proportion to the value that you give into the marketplace. All right. Remember, although you're offering something for free, it still needs to be also relevant to your market. Don't just go in and start looking for free stuff to give away. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, just sit there and, 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 and get people to like your videos or, or whatever it is. You want to make sure that if you're going to be doing that, you, you, it has to be relevant to your market. You also have to be consistent and also it's congruent to the brand purpose and so that when people do land into your stuff, they find a familiar environment and people only really, really are familiar with what they're familiar with. Okay, so I hope this um, video will give you a few ways to actually really, really go out there and add value and so that your future prospects and customers would actually start doing business with you. You know why? Because you actually care. People don't care how much you know or how much you, 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 you can provide. People only care how much you actually care. All right. I don't know. Maybe there's other ways that you've been providing value into your marketplace or methods that have been working. Please list them in the comments below and let me know how you're doing it today. Actually, before I go, um, I don't know if you know Canva, the photo, um, f is it Photoshop, you know, uh, lookalike uh, app that helps you create all those, um, you know, uh, nice photos on, on Instagram or whatever. Canva, Canva, Canva. You know what I saw today? That makes me see that this whole thing um, it, it is going ballistic. They were creating, um, you know, they were helping you create just the photos. Now they're opening up a division where you can print those photos. And the first sort of 500 customers or so, they're going to be doing it for free. All right. Now, can you imagine that value that you're going to be off? They're going to be offering to those 500 people. And those 500 people are going to be their ambassadors. Just like I've just done now, because you know what? I've signed up for that. They're just offering something for free and people would tell people about it. People will tell their friends, their relatives and anybody else that cares. All right. Like I just told you right now that Canva is now offering print. So look it up and sign up so that you can be part of the 500 that are the test subjects. So that's the value of offering your stuff for free in order for people to, to, to try it. And at the end of the day, once you've done that, guys, you know, customers will continuously come. You know why? Because you've already provided value to them. So like I said in the comments below, let me know how you're also providing value to your customers. And thank you so much, guys, because you know what? You sitting there and watching this makes me, um, you know, very proud and makes me, um, you know, what do you call it? Very, very grateful that, you know, at least my words are not falling on deaf ears. All right. If you're going to be watching this in post-production, thank you so much for your time. And if you're watching this live, thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see you on the next round, guys.